Have you ever taken a picture and captured a spirit orb, a ball of light, a mist, an image, or an actual apparition of a loved one? Well, stay tuned because I'm gonna give you some very simple tips on how you can begin taking your own spirit photos. Hi everyone, I'm Diana Palm from dianapalm.com. I'm a medium and a spiritual healer, and today I wanna to help you to be able to take your own spirit photos. Now, I've been taking spirit photos for many, many years, several decades, and it actually started for me kind of by accident. I always had a lot of supernatural activity around me. I lived in many haunted houses, and I'm a natural medium. But before I developed my skills and abilities to work with others as a medium, I just had a lot of spirits around me. I had an awareness that there were spirits around me, and I wanted actual proof. I always feel it's a very good thing to be a bit skeptical and not believe that every orb or every picture is a loved one in spirit. Because spiritual energy can actually appear in an orb, it's not always a loved one or an angel. Sometimes it's a ghost, sometimes it's an entity, and sometimes it's an elemental. So there should be some discernment on what you are connecting with. To be sure that you're actually capturing spirit photos, it's a really good idea if you take a little time to meditate, pray, or quiet your mind, tap in and tune in with the spirit world or with your environment, and ask, simply ask for a connection from the spirit world. If it's a loved one that you're longing to connect with, invite them into your home, invite them to visit you, and especially when you're intending to take spirit photos. When you're out in nature taking photos of fairies and elementals and spiritual energies that exist out in nature, it's a really good idea to ask them for permission before you take photos. They don't always like to show up for humans, so it is really important to establish a connection of trust and to know that what you're doing with your spirit photos is meant to educate others and confirm to you the reality of the spirit world and that they won't be used to exploit the fairy kingdom or the ghosts or our loved ones in spirit. I always go about taking spirit photos with a high level of integrity and I honor those in spirit who show up in photographs. I worked for many years with paranormal groups in the field and this is where I became very comfortable with my own spirit photography abilities. Some of the things I'll share with you today are the very simplest techniques that I know you will really enjoy and will really enhance your own abilities to take spirit photography. First, I wanna begin with the camera. It's kind of all about the camera. And when I'm teaching people how to take spirit photos, I always advise them getting just a simple point and shoot digital camera. You can take spirit photos with your iPhone and with more advanced 35 millimeter cameras or whatever kind of equipment that you have. However, keep in mind that spiritual energies will appear in infrared and ultraviolet lights. And typically, if you have red eye reduction on your camera, it will be blocking out a lot of the frequencies that spirit actually appears in. I've always found it the most helpful to stick with a simple point and shoot digital camera that's not really high end, maybe like $100 or so, $75 to $100. If you stay in that range, you're probably gonna be able to capture more light frequencies because they're not gonna have a more advanced filter system for crystal clear pictures. You're going to capture more of the frequencies that spirit exists in. If you do have red eye reduction on your camera and it's an option for you to select to turn it off or on, just turn it off for taking spirit photos and you'll find that you get much better results this way. I've used this camera for many, many years and it's just a Samsung Digimax uh, S800 series. And it doesn't have to be this exact camera, but this one has worked really, really well for me time and time again. There were times when I was in a haunted location or a cemetery and going to take spirit photos when all of a sudden none of my equipment would work. My camera wouldn't even turn on, my recorders wouldn't turn on, nothing would work. And it's always at those times that you realize your batteries are being drained by spirit. So if this ever happens to you, just know that they are trying really hard to come through and produce physical evidence for you, but they do need to draw that extra energy from somewhere. And if you're having a lot of equipment and devices that you're using, it will be those that they drain first because for some reason, it's the easiest to access those batteries. 
So if that happens to you on a haunted investigation, I just inform people to bring extra batteries for every piece of equipment that you plan on using. Another really good technique that I recommend is to first establish contact. So close your eyes, tune in, and ask any spirits that are present to come in and connect with you. Ask them to gather energy and show up for you in a photo in whatever way that they're able to. I recommend taking multiple pictures in the same location, holding the camera absolutely steady. If you have a tripod or mini tripod, go ahead and use that. If you are using a smartphone for this, you can use a little remote so that you can click that camera to take pictures from a distance away. But I recommend taking multiple pictures and the reason is because when they do show up, it may be a flash and you don't want to miss it. Secondarily, if you get several clear pictures and then a mist in the third picture, you're going to know that that spirit showing themselves to you. I've often had this happen where there's no activity whatsoever and when I ask them to engage, suddenly there'll be orbs or images or mists and then the pictures go back to being crystal clear again. And this would be considered a really good and viable source of spirit photography. Now some people like to just throw out all the pictures where they say, well that's a lens flare, that's from the sun, that's from this or that. But I want to caution you about throwing them all away. As I said, it's good to be skeptical but also know that this is how spirit will come through. Spirit is in a frequency of light and they often will use light from the environment to show up, whether it's producing an orb, an image. I've even had them write words right in the air by using a light source that they're able to manipulate and utilize for themselves. So don't automatically say, that's a lens flare, that's from the flash, that's from this or that. Look at those photos more carefully because it is accessible energy for spirits to produce themselves in or to provide messages for you. So it can still be a great source of spirit communication, proof of the afterlife, and they can still appear in light to let you know that they're with you. Another piece of equipment that I like to use, if you're in a static environment, let's say you're just in one particular room in a haunted house, or maybe it's your own living room and you're wishing to communicate with the spirit of a loved one, I like to use one of these laser lights. And when you turn it on, it actually produces a green laser on the wall. And it can get quite large. What it looks like is like this. But the further you have it away, you'll see that it produces a really nice grid system. There are several different settings so that you can change what your grid work looks like. So when something actually passes through it, you'll be able to see the energy going through the grid and capture some really good evidence of the afterlife. The only drawback to this piece of equipment is that you do have to hold the button steady. So they do have a little mini tripod that you can get and when you place it through there, it can hold the button down permanently so you can remove your hands and move about the room freely. Now, while we're on the topic of spirit photography, I also want to address photography, which is thought photography. You now, many psychic people actually have the ability to impress their own thoughts in a photograph. And this is an actual thing that's been studied and utilized for many, many years. There's evidence showing that photography can actually produce results in pictures. So I like to connect this with spirit photography because it's all about utilizing our own innate psychic and mediumship abilities and our ability to connect with the world around us and all the spiritual realms that exist around us at all times. So it's really important to set that intention when you're doing this to keep a nice clear mind, to not project your own thoughts and desires in the environment, but to actually ask spirit to communicate with you so that you know when you're actually producing results and getting photos of orbs and symbols and images that it is truly from the spirit world and that they're making that bridge to connect with you. Your intention is really important here. If you're new to spirit photography, I also want to recommend that you pick one camera and stick with it. There is an actual synergistic thing that happens when you're working with a device such as a camera. Now, when I first picked up this camera, it did not take spirit photos. It was just taking clear photos of my family and different things in my environment. But the more I utilized it and the more I set the intention for it to capture spirits, 
it began to produce results. There is something that happens energetically between you and the device that you're using. So rather than using one camera, oh, it doesn't work, use another, use another, use another, stick with the one camera and continue to set the intention over and over that you would like it to produce spirit photos. You would like it to pick up on what's going on spiritually in your environment and continue to do this. You'll see that the more you work with one specific device, the better it will actually work for you out in the field and in any environment where you're taking your spirit photos. When you do start producing results with your spirit photography, it's also really fun to take it to the next level and ask them to interact with you. I've actually done experiments to see if they're intelligent spirits by asking them to produce an orb in my hand or an image over my head. And while people are photographing me, these types of anomalies are happening in all the photos. So asking them to change color, change location, or to multiply, you'll actually begin to really develop a connection with the spirit world and the spiritual energies around you. Another thing that you may notice is that when you're out in the field doing spirit photography and connecting with spirit, that not only will your devices get drained with their batteries, but you may notice that they're taking energy from the device itself that can be captured in other people's photographs. You may actually see the blue light leaving the camera and it's being drawn out into the spirit world so that they can utilize that. So if you're in an active environment with multiple people, make sure to take pictures of other people's cameras and see if this phenomena is taking place before there's an increase of spiritual activity. Another thing you should know about spirit photography is that sometimes you will get a very blurry picture and you will think that you did not capture anything spiritual. I'm gonna tell you to hang on to those photos because spirit photography is not always immediate. Sometimes it can take months for the energy that spirit has put into that photograph to develop. Even though you may be taking it on a digital camera and you can see the picture right away, don't delete the ones that you think are not worthy because spirit takes time to develop within the photograph itself. It's a supernatural phenomenon and it is a real thing where spirit photography can develop over time. You may even begin to look at pictures that you've taken in the past and over time they will shift and change. This has everything to do with spirit photography and the spiritual energy that's connected in with your pictures. One of the reasons why I really love to bring cameras with me into the field is because your brain is programmed to tune out things that you would think were crazy or abnormal or you're not supposed to see them, they don't exist, you're not supposed to see that ghost or entity or loved one in spirit. And so many times your own brain is actually shutting it down and not allowing you to perceive these images that are around you. But the camera doesn't have a brain. The camera is simply going to take pictures of what it sees, whatever is there. And it makes no judgment on if it's right or wrong or supernatural or natural. It's just gonna capture things. So in a way, it's a way to bypass your own mind and your eyes if you have limited ability to see spiritually. And the camera will actually pick up on and capture for you what is there, what is really there. So if you're interested in spirit photography, get yourself one camera, turn off the red eye reduction if you have that, and begin to really invite the spirit world to work with you, set your intention for your device. I recommend that you just hold the device, you can maybe say a prayer over it, just really connect with the energy of the device that you're using by setting your intentions that this will be the item that you use for spirit photography. And then ask your angels and your guides to help and assist with this so that they can actually align you better with the energy of your device and help you to produce more spirit photos. Taking spirit photos is a ton of fun and it's really actually heartwarming, healing, and at the same time exciting to be able to connect with your own loved ones in spirit or to know that you do have angels around you or that your loving pets are still following you around. 
And it really is true. The camera will help you to perceive and pick up on these subtle light frequencies and these energies in the spirit world. So whether you get an orb, a blur of light, a flash of something going by you, or little sparkles all around, just know that you are embraced by the spirit world. Your loved ones are still with you and they love to communicate with you in this process and they love to let you know that they're still with you and still around you. I would love to know what your favorite spirit photo is that you've captured and what type of device did you use? Was it a digital camera, a smartphone? Write that down in the comments below. If you like this channel, go ahead and subscribe so that you always get my newest video every single Thursday when I upload a new one. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Have a great day.